What's a marketing plan? A marketing plan is a written document that outlines the company's advertising and marketing activities for the future with the aim of developing a comprehensive strategy for the sale of products and services. It describes business activities involved in accomplishing specific marketing objectives within a set time frame. A successful marketing plan should also include an analysis of the current marketing position, a study on the target market, the target customers and the possible competitors, and eventually a description of the marketing mix tool that a business will use to achieve their marketing goals. Marketing plans start with the identification of customer needs through market research and how the organization can satisfy these needs while at the same time generating some profit. This includes processes such as market situation analysis, action programs, budgets, sales forecasts, strategies and projected financial statements. It can also contain a full analysis of the strengths and weaknesses of the organization and its management. The marketing plan shows the actions that will be utilized in order to achieve the planned goals. Therefore, it's used to describe the methods of applying a company's marketing resources in order to fulfill its marketing objectives. Planning helps to segment the market to identify and forecast the market type and size. So, why is it useful to develop a marketing plan? A good marketing plan can help any organization to face competitors, to acknowledge and consequently to act on consumers' preferences, and to increase the number of its customers to a larger audience. The plan also shall assist the business in showing prospective investors that the production or the promotion and selling process is carefully planned and so the end product is marketable and can bring to stable profits. Here is an example of a marketing plan with some sample data. Tasks to be accomplished, status of activities, time frame, people in charge and so on. Purpose. The main purpose of developing a marketing plan is to figure out and to fix a specific path in marketing for the organization. The marketing goals should normally match the broader company objectives. For instance, if an organization is looking to grow in a specific field or sector, they will generally develop a marketing plan that emphasizes strategies to increase their knowledge, their production, and so their access to that specific terrain. Acquiring marketing share, increasing customer awareness, and building a favorable business image are some of the objectives that can be related to marketing planning. The marketing plan also helps lay out the necessary budget and financial or human resources needed to achieve the goals set. It is in fact a tool that helps stating what an organization intends to accomplish within a specific budget and whether there is profitable returns on the investments to be made. After strategies are laid out and the tasks are developed, each task is assigned to a person or a team for implementation. This will help in keeping track of achievements and communication. Furthermore, such a plan can help the company notice what it lacks in terms of human or financial resources and how to improve the possible shortcomings. The marketing plan allows the organization to keep an eye on the environment they are surrounded by and furthermore offers a unique opportunity for a productive discussion between employees and leaders of an organization. It so provides a good communication with the company. The marketing plan also allows the marketing team to examine their past decisions and understand the results in order to better prepare for the future. Implementation A marketing plan typically includes a description of competitors including the level of demand for the product or service and the strengths and weaknesses of competitors, a description of its own product or service, the marketing budget including the advertising and promotional plan, a description of the business location including advantages and disadvantages for marketing, the pricing strategy, and the market segmentation. We want to give you a deep insight of a marketing plan, so it comes in handy to briefly describe the contents of the plan, which encompasses 1. A title page, which besides the organization's information needs to include also the time framework covered. 2. An executive summary, which has the objective of providing a clear overview to both internal and external resources. 3. 
a description of the internal situation of the organization and its objectives. This section contains the organization's mission and its objectives in relation to its employees and customers and consumers. It also should contain a report on sales performance in the past and predictions for the future so as to outline possible threats and hurdles and strategies to tackle them. Eventually, this section should also encompass further various focal points such as the organization's sales objectives, the market share objectives, and its profit objectives and how to reinvest the profit in the future. 4. An analysis of the surrounding environment, which shall encompass a thorough analysis of the external and internal elements that can affect the organization's performance. The analysis entails assessing the level of threat or opportunity the factors may present, especially those ones that are beyond one's control. The step comes in handy for the development of a strategy to improve the company against competitors and to plan on developing a more competitive product or service, as well as to state the organization's objectives in relation to current and prospective customers. 5. An analysis of the market. To detect the dynamics of the specific market, we will deal with this point in the next slides. 6. A customer-consumer analysis. To identify the target consumers and the target customers, to ascertain their needs, to specify how the product satisfies those needs, we will deal with this point further in the next slides as well. 7. An overview of promotion and distribution strategies to increase sales and to achieve a sustainable competitive advantage. This too will be analyzed in the next slides. And then the last part of the plan forces number 8, a financial summary and prediction of future scenarios. First off, a market analysis is extremely useful as it allows any business to assess if a specific sector, segment or key area they want to serve or to fit in is growing, is mature or declining. If the sector is sinking, then an analysis of the micro environment and the macro environment is necessary in order to spot the problems. If the sector is mature, then it is useful for the business to adapt to the external forces and to develop a plan on how to grow more competitive. If the market sector is still growing, which is the best scenario, the business shall point out how they will differentiate from the competitors and in what way they, would, they plan on becoming a new key actor across the sector, for instance, through the use of innovative technologies. Secondly, a market analysis would help the business in carefully planning actions to favor the product longevity, to obtain a specific niche within the market sector and to find out the possible threats to be faced. Furthermore, it could be useful to make a comparison of national or regional sale of the specific product that would help in finding out the best geographical location for promotion. A market analysis shall entail researches on such topics as global business environment. It helps understand the working environment, for instance, the unemployment rate in the last couple of years and its impact on sales and revenues in the local sector, or the political and juridical pattern in which they will be working in. For example, assurances, licenses, authorizations, fiscal taxation, etc. Or the demographic pattern, namely the population segment they will target and where they live, which products they tend to buy, how much they spend on similar products every year, and so on. It'd be useful to state if the product is only addressed to a specific group and if that group is stable, is shrinking, or is increasing. Local business environment. It helps understand the local market, the network of trading contacts, the customers and competitors on a closer scale. An important information would be the identification of suppliers and the type of supplies needed, the identification of specific customers, their characteristics and preferences in terms of products, and eventually the identification of a particular community network to foresee the outcomes of sales. A special part shall also be dedicated to the analysis of all current and possible competitors of the products and the services, their facilities, their market shares, their activities and suppliers, their weaknesses and their strengths. A research on competitors' positioning within the local and national market and also their products, their customers, their prizes and their experience would be extremely important.
So in a nutshell, we can state that in order to carry out a successful market analysis, a business shall re research on the global business environment as well as the local environment, on its suppliers, on the sociocultural aspects, and eventually on the competitors. Customer-Consumer Analysis If a business does not know who its customers are or what the customer wants, it cannot meet the customer's needs. It is therefore fundamental to identify the target consumer or customer by describing how the organization intends to satisfy their needs in a better way than its competitors. Therefore, it would be useful to list the customer's expectations about a specific product and if there may be differences in demand and in competitors' products. For example, quality, price, after-sales service might be sectors entailing differences. It will also be useful to identify the market segment that will most likely purchase the product or the service so as to adapt it to the likely purchaser. We can sum up this analysis in three steps. 1. The identification of customers. 2. The definition of their needs. and 3 how the product will solve the customer's problem or satisfy their needs. So, the identification of a customer or consumer. The first step requires that the business, business identifies who the target customer is. Be specific here. The more specific this, this target is, the more targeted the marketing plan can be for the company. It could be helpful to start off by selecting the region, the age range, or in case of business, the number of employees or type of businesses or the success of the business specifically. Once this is complete, the organization should be able to answer questions like How many potential customers are there? Compared to a year more ago, is the number of potential customers growing or decreasing? What is the income or the revenue that the customer has? Where are the customers located? What lifestyle, goals or other information do we know about the customers? The definition of their needs. Analyzing and defining the customer's or the consumer's needs can be done in various ways. For instance, considering the group's past actions, as the number of people who has purchased the product at some time in the past, or conducting a survey on how many customers would potentially purchase the product or the service, or even determining which problems prevail in order to learn how many customers need a specific service or product to see improvements. And this brings us to the third step in the customer analysis. How the product will solve the customer's problem or satisfy their needs. And the final step of a customer analysis section, the organization needs to think about how the product or the service offered would satisfy the needs of customers and consumers. This brings the marketing plan to full circle as it goes back to the customer's needs and wants. This phase should help answering questions like why will this purchase the service? What information or data do we have to support this information? Is price important for those potential customers? Is quality more important than price for them? Is the customer likely to seek out other products or services to compare them? Which organization's resources will the customer turn to before making a purchase to gather more information or to get an opinion? Is the target customer looking for a basic product, an elaborate product, a reliable product, or a product that can implement themselves? Promotion Strategy Promotion is one of the main activities within a marketing strategy, and it's even the most noticeable, as it involves advertising. Promotion doesn't only advertise the product, but also the organization and its brand. Within a marketing plan, it's rather important to specify how the product will be advertised and promoted, which specific channels will be used, social media, word of mouth, radio, newspapers, and so on, and for what kind of target the channel will be used. The costs of promotion are also a great concern, and by costs we mean both promotional materials and human resources to be deployed for it. Nowadays, online promotional and advertising services are gaining ground and therefore a good online marketing strategy could substantially help any organization to reach new customers and to get new competitive advantages and grounds. 
we can highlight four different elements that are peculiar of a successful online marketing strategy. One, the use of keywords to optimize a website. Two, a search engine optimization, CEO, which is the process of affecting the visibility of a website or web page in a web search engine's on-page results like Google, Bing, and so on, that also permits a number of updates so as the website gets the best visibility on the web. Three, use of paid online advertising. And four, use of social media to reach a large number of customers, especially youngsters, using medias like Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, etc. Besides online promotion, there is still standard means of advertising that could come in handy. First example, radio. It's important to focus on radio programs linked to the image or the brand of the organization or the target group. A second example, newspapers. And here it's important to focus on which level of promotion is intended, if local, regional, national, and so on. How often and, and when should there be adverts and promotion? Thirdly, TV and billboards can be rather expensive channels, and so the choice must be well-reasoned. Fourth, partnerships and other related organizations, for example, suppliers, who can offer the opportunity of a joint promotion which can both improve the image and boost the sales potential of any organization.